everybody, and welcome to Mortal Fury. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Glad you joined us this week. Uh, Chris and I are here together. Chris has brought us uh, a treat today from the Apostle Paul, of course. And he was reading um, in Colossians, second chapter. So he brought that here today and shared that with me. And there's just some great, wonderful stuff in there. And he has some really neat thoughts and insight about that so i think we're just going to read that and uh and go from go from I'm, there <laughs> i'm laughing because i wrote colossians 2 10 through 15 but instead of colossians i think i wrote collisions <laughs> that, I'm telling you, maybe bringing, that was purposeful he's bringing in some great insight <laughs> Be prepared, collisions. right yeah, here collisions comes, here 2 10 collisions. through 15 yeah. here comes some collisions chris can bring it <laughs> um reading today in Colossians, and I came across this, and it was very profound, and uh, I'm going to read uh, a part of it, and then I'll have Dean finish it up, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. Uh, this is, like I said, uh, Colossians 2, 10 through 15. And you are complete in him who is the head of every sovereignty and authority, in whom you were circumcised also with a circumcision not made by hands, in the stripping off of the body of flesh in the circumcision of Christ, being entombed together with him in baptism, in whom you were roused together also through faith in the operation of God. Who rouses him from among the dead, you also being dead to the offenses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he vivifies us together jointly with him, dealing graciously with all our offenses, erasing the handwriting of the, de of the decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and has taken it away out of the midst, nailing it to the cross, stripping off the sovereignties and authorities with boldness he makes a show of them, triumphing over them in it. Yeah. That... <laughs> The whole, when I finished reading that, I stopped. I had gone farther, but then I stopped and went back up and looked at it, reread it. And the thing I was struck by was, you know, those of you who <clears throat> like to look these scriptures up with us, anywhere in there, is it a collaborative event? Is it a cooperation event? Where is our part? What part are we playing in, in any of this? I mean, this is all for us, members of the body of Christ. I mean, every bit of this, um, he makes us complete in him. He, um, in whom you were roused together. He does the rousing. Um, he vivifies us together jointly with him. He erases the handwriting of the decrees against us. It's amazing mm -hmm. that he, <laughs> everything about this, it's none of our part. We're not doing anything uh, for these gifts. Um, I, I even went back to, okay, what did, what possible, we were chosen for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful words there to think about. Um, and as you know, if you've been part with us for a while, Chris and I love reading from the Apostle Paul in these letters. And anybody new out there to the show, that's our heart, that's our desire to just maybe expose you to look at Scripture, perhaps in a different way. Mm -hmm. I, I used to, my old way of thinking, you know, I looked at even Scripture and the writings of Paul differently than I do today. Today, it's a complete celebration. It's a a thing of uh, learning and wonder and all about this awesome God yeah. that loves his creation. He knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. And there again, it's kind of, you know, believe it if you're able is what you'll hear us say sometimes because it's, it's too good to be true, some of these mm -hmm. things. There is, like Chris stated so wonderfully, there's no part whatsoever that we play. We can't make this true. Yeah, when they says you're so, complete in him... Yeah, what that, do you add to complete? I know. And that's either a true statement from this man named Paul right. that 
said he learned from the resurrected Christ. So either he believed that or not. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, where you're at with that. Uh, we can't add anything to that or, or take anything away from it. Right. Um, we happen to believe it, love it, and are celebrating it now. We're not trying to apply it to our life or trying to make it happen or right. make it. Um, and so we're, that's what we're kind of focusing in here on today is what is, has been accomplished for us. And then why are these things difficult to believe, even for members of the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. What things would stand in the way? Mm -hmm. And immediately I think of the adversary. Everything. Yeah. They, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that, good point. I mean, everything. Right. I mean, it's not like any other yeah. relationship that we have. Mm -hmm. As much as I love my wife, I know that there is still a, um, a give and take that, you know, is involved in our relationship and me doing things for her and her hopefully doing, the, you know, that, that relationship is like that. It's unlike this here, um, this unmerited favor that we have in grace through the, through Christ Jesus. Right. Uh, that's what makes this interesting. I went to A. E. Knox, uh, commentary on these scriptures, and I found it interesting because he was talking about the one true religion. There's only been one religion, and that's Judaism, and that's what God set up. That's how he dealt with mankind, uh, the, the Israelites specifically. And it had all these ordained rituals mm -hmm. and rites and uh, feasts and all these things that they had to do for this relationship to work. And it was a lot of, you do this and I'll do that for you. Mm -hmm you know, uh, the, the, um, sacrifices that would atone for a period of time. And then you'd have to repeat it again. It had to do with a performance and following a set of rules in order to have that relationship repaired with you and the father. And that makes it difficult for us to understand what grace is because all of the religious institutions that come along behind it and in some way or another, it's man's attempt to right the relationship with God for man to do his part. Well, I'm looking up here at 10 through 15 and I can't find man's part. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about. Um, I like in here where he says, as God's compliment, Christ is the answer to philosophy. As our compliment, he is the end of, of religion. What would it be like if we had no religion after the, after the then, death and resurrection of Christ? Yeah. No religion, no nothing left. He was the answer, is the answer. Yeah. And we're done with religion. We don't need it anymore for access. Um, it, 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 very interesting yeah. uh, to look at that. And if any of that's new to you, you know, that kind of sounds a little different or new. Absolutely. Just, yeah, pursue that. Check that out. Cause it's all just wonderful, great news. And, and it's a transition. Everything is progressive. He's constantly moving us forward. We talked about um, his intention, his will and his intention last week. And we're, he's progressing us along with our circumstances mm -hmm. and influences. Well, we totally... Accept that and love that. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. That tell that means we're leaning on the author of our lives. You know, and so our faith is progressive and we appreciate that. I don't want to hold two doctrines for all of my life and say, Well, this is all I believe, that's all I've ever believed. It's all I want Yeah. You know, I like that idea that God is bringing me into greater and greater realizations. Personally, I don't believe my realizations end when I die. I think right. there are realiz realizations to come oh, yeah. from God. Yeah. You know? I so it, it's just, um, I enjoy that our faith is progressive. And it is moving forward all by the hand of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we've talked about some of these things, you were just sharing that we get bogged down in these religious systems 
and these rites and rituals and stuff. And then sometimes, every once in a while, someone gives us something that makes you just sort of drops your shoulders and you can go, oh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That comes from uh, that video we talked about last week. Yeah. From our brother Paul in Germany. That's right. That uh, we love his comments. And I appreciate him so much um, for those comments. And he sent us a little video clip. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's short. And we're going to play it right now for you. Yeah. So enjoy. In the backyard of her home in northern Florida, my grandmother had a, a, a porch swing. And um, she would always sit in it and, and swing, and she would hum old church hymns like uh, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. And uh, in my mind, I can still see her there. She, she had a white scarf over her head which was a, a concession to chemotherapies, uh, unrelenting march in her life. And as a young adult, when I visited her in Northern Florida, um, she would always ask me to sit with her on the swing for a spell, she called it. And she patted my leg and she called me darling. And here's the power of that. Every time I went there, I never had to explain or defend or worry because the power of my grandmother and that porch swing was grace incarnate. And grace says loudly and clearly, you are enough. You are enough. It's so hard to hear because I live in a world that tells me every day, it bombards me every day, that more is never enough. And there needs to be something else I need to add to my life to be okay. And on those days, I thank God for my, my grandmother and her porch swing. So what I say to people now is, give yourself the permission to hear the voice of grace today. Or, or let's, let me put it this way, give yourself the permission to find a porch swing.